much time, I'll invite our dear mommy, Pastor Marie, to bless us today and lead us in prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be here on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That we're alive and well, full of vitality in Jesus' name. And my testimony would be that I've noticed what I've noticed. It's like the Lord has injected into our, our youth, the, our, our worship leaders, our instrumentalists, our, our singers, a, a new um, a new zeal. A new zeal. They believe what they're speaking and saying from their mouth. It's 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 just sweet aroma to God. You know, it's getting sweeter and sweeter. You know, and He can see your heart. He can see your heart as you walk. You're in His presence. You know, you're in the presence of the Lord. When we come in here, we feel the presence of the Lord through the singing and the worship. We are brought into the presence. You know, praise and worship brings you into the presence of God. And I really feel it and I know it in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask you to bless the word this morning in the name of Jesus. Today being intercessory Sunday, uh, you know, we know that uh, Jesus, when he was on this earth, he made intercession. And he, he, he most of his intercession was he prayed for the lost, that they would come to, to, uh, and, and be saved. This is what he prayed. And we remember when he was in Jerusalem, he wept over Jerusalem. He wept over the city of Jerusalem and said, with brokenness. He wept over the city. And he prayed for the disciples. He prayed individually for them and he prayed for them as a group of people. Um, and he prayed for his enemies while he was on the cross. That is something. Pray for our enemies. And for intercessory Sunday, when I'm going to speak about maybe a bit unusual, I actually thought Pastor Victor was going to take what he's going to preach yesterday. <laughs> because he said a lot of this, and I said, well, he has everything said that I want to say. But anyway, we will continue. Because, you know, and we know that, um, that Jesus is always interceding within us uh, to the Father. The Holy Spirit is always interceding within us to the Father on our behalf. The Holy Spirit every day is interceding for you, whether you know it or not. And Jesus is at the right hand side of the Father interceding for you. And your friends here at the church are interceding for you. So you're very well looked after. So don't ever think I'm all alone. Nobody thinks about me. Yes, they do. They do. They do. We pray for the congregation every day. We pray for the congregation. Those who've been to the church and have left and those who are in the church. We pray all the time. We pray for our families. The mothers brought children to Jesus to pray for them, you know, and we, we saw that where Abraham was making the, inter the intercession there for Sodom and Gomorrah with God. He was standing between God and the people, you know, making intercession. Praise the Lord. So, so intercession is a wonderful thing, you know, and our prayers are answered when we, when we make intercession um, because the Holy Spirit's power comes. You know, and does that work? Praise the Lord. So today, um, I said, Lord, what do you want me to speak about? And I was thinking, and I had something in mind. And I said to my daughter, what do you think God wants to speak to the congregation about? And with that, just, it came out there. She said, the Holy Spirit says forgiveness. And I thought, oh, that's confirmation. That's confirmation. And I thought, I'm, am I speaking to, the, to those who have clean hands and pure hearts? Perhaps so, but perhaps there's little things that we have omitted and we haven't looked into in a deep way, you know. So, um, today's theme would be forgive those who have hurt you in the past. Why? We know that forgiveness is required by God. That's the first thing. When Jesus spoke the Amen, you know, when he made his model prayer, which we know is the Our Father, and it included a petition for God's forgiveness. Forgive those who trespass against us, he said. We are asking forgiveness for those who trespass against us. 
he commented for if you forgive men for their transgressions your heavenly father will also forgive you you can put up matches 6 14 and 15 please your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive men then your father will not forgive you your transgression so we must forgive as much as we forgive others that's the nature of god forgives us so this morning we're going to ask because are we holding anything against anyone so we must base our relationship with others on the same criteria on which god bases his relationship with us and what's that criteria it's love acceptance and forgiveness We all read the parable of the unfaithful servant. Do you remember? And um, it, it, it was described like a king going away, and you know, he brought his servants and he, he, he servant owed him so much. So he let him off. He let him off the hook and he said, you know, he didn't need to pay uh, the, the, the price, you know. But you know what the ungrateful servant then then if someone else owed him a small amount of money. And he caught him by the throat and threatened him and all that sort of thing. And uh, he got him thrown into prison. So, you know, he didn't accept what was done for him, the great forgiveness that the, that the king had on him. But he wanted to punish this fellow who owed very little to him. So um, forgiveness is necessary to, to avoid any snares of the devil in your life. And Paul encouraged us to forgive. In 2 Corinthians 2 11, we can put that up, please. 2 Corinthians 2 11. This is why you should you should forgive to avoid this entrapment of Satan. Least Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. When he sees unforgiveness in your heart, Satan, you know, he, he, he tries his best to do something with that. He holds that against you, you know, and, and don't be ignorant of this, that, that he's always around looking for loopholes. So, you know, in knitting, when you get a loop, a loop goes down, the cord becomes bigger and bigger, and it's hard to fix it. So, don't let him have any loophole in your life, in the name of Jesus. So, secondly, forgiveness is required by all of us who believe and who desire to be like Christ. And put up Ephesians 4, verse 31 and 32, please. Thank you. Paul wrote this. Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, please. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. So you can examine yourself. Is there any of that in you? Is there any hint of that in any of us? And we have to be kind and tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. So, God has forgiven you. Be tender-hearted. Don't be hard-hearted. Because remember what Christ said, that's his unfaithful servant. You know, he wasn't any way tender-hearted. He loved to be shown kindness and, and, and mercy, but he wasn't tender-hearted. He was unforgiving. He had forgot what he had been forgiven for and let go. Let go of the debt that he owed. But forgiving is not forgetting. Forgetting can be a long-term byproduct of forgiving. 
It can take you a long time to forget. But it's not a means to forgiveness. Forget, forgetting is not a means to forgiveness. It's a knocked out. I forget about that. That's a knocked out. When God says he will remember our sins no more, you can confirm that with Hebrews 10, 17, if you want to put it up, please. Hebrews 10, 17. He's not saying he will forget them. Because God cannot forget. He's not forgetful. God can't forget. But it means that he'll never use the past against you. He'll never use the past against you. He says, look at this fourth scripture first. Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. That means he won't hold it against you anymore. Because God can't forget. He can't forget. Because when you go up to heaven, your whole screen of your life is put up on the screen in front of you. So that means he hasn't forgotten even your good deeds. He has forgotten nothing. So it, it just means he won't hold it against you. And put up Psalm 103, verse 12, please. This is what he says he'd do with them. Psalm 103, verse 12, please. He will remove it as far as the east is from the west. So far has he removed our transgressions for us. The east is a very long way from the west. That's how far he has removed your transgressions for, from you. Forgiveness doesn't mean you must tolerate sin. Not forgiving someone doesn't mean you must be a doormat to people. Some people let themselves become a doormat. Doormat to that continual sin. You can confront the person in a loving way and you can firmly tell them you're not going to tolerate their destructive uh, behavior any longer, you know, because they can manipulate you and that, and that can continue and continue. And you're always uneasy and unhappy about that. But you must confront it in a loving way, in a loving way. They may not even know that that, that just that behavior is destructive, you know, and it's causing you a lot of grief. So it's okay, it's okay to, to forgive another their sins. It's okay to forgive them their sins. And um, at the same time, you can take a stand there against future sins. That you bring them to their senses, maybe, and they won't sin against you in that way anymore. But sometimes we shy away and we don't confront that in other people. Very often it's our relatives, our near relatives. It can be your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, your daughter-in-law, maybe. You know, it happens within families usually, within the church too, but often within families, you know. So forgiveness, it does not seek revenge or it does not demand repayment for those offenses that you suffered. But that unjust, uh, that man that, they, that, that, that um, was forgiven much, he, he didn't act in that way. You know, he wanted to punish, to get that other man punished for the small amount that he owed him. But he told him he would pay it if he gave him time. But he didn't even give him time. So you might say, am I supposed to let everyone off the hook then? Yes, do. Realize that God does not let them off the hook. You're not the judge, but he's the just judge. He's the just judge. He'll make everything right in the end. He'll make everything right. Put up Romans 12, verse 19 please. And he says, vengeance is his. And he will pay, says the Lord. Romans 12, verse 19.
Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Praise God. And how did he repay? Where is the justice? It is at the crucifixion of Jesus. He died once, he says, for all. He died for that person's sins, for his sins, her sins, my sins. He died for all our sins. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Put up Romans 6, verse 10. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Do you understand? It was all done at the cross. It was all done at the cross. Praise his holy name. He died for your sins, my sins, his and her sins. For the sins of the whole world. So forgiveness means you, you have to live with the consequences of the, these offenders. You have to live with the consequences. Is that too much to ask us? Whether you forgive that person or not. You can just think if, if a church member, well, a member, if a church member says to you, I have gossiped about you all over the town. And you know, I was down in Wexford yesterday and I was gossiping about you. <laughs> and I always think of gossip as I read it a long, long time ago and it never left me as being given a bag of feathers. And it's a very windy day and you start plucking out the feathers out of the bag and they go all over the place. It's totally impossible to collect up all those feathers again, isn't it? The, the impossible. Some have blown up the tops of trees, some have gone down drain pipes. You know, you cannot do it. It's the same with gossip. Once it's done, it's done. It's done. So you may have been gossiped about in the church or in town or among your relatives or your in-laws. You know, very often the gossip goes to the in-laws. Um, when you forgive, you can't re retract any of that gossip any easier than you can collect the feathers, you know? You have to live with the consequences of that person's gossip. No matter how you respond, you have to live with it. So we're all living with the consequences of someone else's sin. We're all living with the consequences of Adam's sin, aren't we? But praise God for redemption. Praise God when we believed in Jesus. Praise God. So the only real choice is to live with consequences. So you can live in two ways. You can live in bondage to bitterness or you can live in the freedom of forgiveness. You have a choice. You can be bitter the whole of your life. Or you can choose the freedom of forgiveness. You, you know, he shall set you free indeed, you know. And what are these steps to forgiveness then? How do we go about all this? I was going to give everyone a piece of paper. But everyone has a phone now and they can put it into their phones and um, go over it. Mull it over in your mind. See, have I any of this to get rid of? Some may, some may not. But sometimes we need a little story up to see what's really in our heart. Sometimes we need that little story. You know, when you're cooking, you stir from the bottom. You know, in case it gets burned at the bottom, you keep it stirred up. Sometimes we forget to stir up what's in our heart. And it's left there unnoticed. Don't ever say you can't forgive those people who hurt you. They hurt you so badly. So badly at the time. Even thinking about it makes you shiver. And 
the problem is that they're still hurting you if it makes you shit. They're still hurting you. How do you stop that pain? And what's to be gained in forgiving? What's to be gained? There's freedom to be gained. There's freedom for you. Freedom to be gained in forgiveness. You don't heal in order to forgive. The opposite way around. You forgive in order to heal. Forgiveness is to set a captive free. And then it's the realization that you were the captive. You were the captive living with my heart. You were the captive. Those you need to forgive may not be even aware. They may not be even totally aware that you have been offended. And they're not even aware of your choice this morning that you're going to let them go. Let them off the hook. They're not even aware of it. Some may be dead. So unchain yourself this morning. Unchain ourselves this morning. Get on with our lives. Hold nothing against anyone. Another point is ask the Lord to reveal to your mind the people you need to forgive. Name those who have offended you. Some may be close to you. Some may be in your own family. Could be your mother, your father. Like Reverend Victor said yesterday, the two most overlooked people are God and yourself concerning your relationship with God. Only he can forgive your sins. And he has never sinned. And sometimes we're bitter towards God. So this morning, if you have been bitter, you may have done it yesterday. Those of you who were here yesterday, yesterday, we repented of being bitter towards God for any reason. Because sometimes we hold false expectations of God. We need to release God from these false expectations we had. And to appreciate his forgiveness. Appreciate God's forgiveness. Another point would be, we acknowledge the hurt and the hate. And as you work through the list of people, uh, you need to state specifically what you're forgiving them for. Is it, are you forgiving them for rejection maybe that you, that you felt they were rejecting you? Lack of love, maybe some injustice that they've done to you, something unfair that they've done to you. Could be verbal abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, or betrayal of some sort. Gossip, neglect. Tell God how those offenses made you feel. Tell God your feelings. After all, in every sound, People are telling God how they feel. Tell God. He already knows. But you need to release it from your mouth. How you feel. Tell God how you feel. It's a dialogue with God. It's not a sin to, to release the reality of your emotions. Or to acknowledge them. Your emotions were put put in you by God. God knows exactly how you feel, whether you're admitted or not. He knows. So if you start burying your feelings, you'll bypass the, the possibility of forgiveness. You must forgive from your heart. Remember those words. You must forgive from your heart. Forgiveness is legally right and it's morally right. Jesus took upon himself the sins of the whole world. He took your sins and those of the persons that have offended you. 
and he died once and for all. We read that, Hebrews 10, 10. You may say, well, it's not fair. Where's the justice? I already told you the justice is in the cross, in the cross of Jesus and what he done on Calvary. He was able to forgive those, but they knew not what to do. He was able to cry out, Father, forgive them, but they know not what to do. Put up Galatians, another reason, Galatians 6, verses 1 and 2. If a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself least, you also be tempted. That's what I said earlier. I said, restore them gently. gently. Carry each other's burden. And in that way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. You should be able to restore that person. You're restoring yourself, first of all, but you're restoring that person too. Decide you bear the burden of that person's sin, meaning you will not retaliate in a future time. And using that information you have, about their sin against them. Sometimes that can be used, especially with husbands and wives, this can be used sometimes. Bring up the past and start talking about the sin that was committed against you. Bringing up the past. So decide you bear the burden of that person's sin, meaning you will not retaliate in the future by using the information about the sin against them. Proverbs 17, verse 9, and put it up. It says, he who covers over an offense promotes love, but whoever uh, repeats the matter separates close friends. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Don't repeat the matter because you separate close friends. He who covers a transgression seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates friends. It's friends we need, not separation from friends. Make sure you have forgiven from the heart, but it's not just verbal. Make sure you have forgiven from the heart. It's a, it, forgiveness is a crisis of the will. It's a conscious choice to let other persons off the hook and to free yourself from the past. You may not feel like doing it, but it's a necessary thing for your sake. If God tells you to forgive from the heart, be assured that God will enable you to do it. If you have that desire, God will enable you to do it. The other person may be very much in the wrong. And they may even be thinking of court action for you. You know, they may have gone that far. They may have even gone that far. That's not your concern. Your concern is to receive freedom from your past and to stop the pain that you're feeling. So it's up to you to make that decision now. Another point, be sure to accept your part of the blame for the offenses you suffered. If you're to pay, make sure you accept that part. Confess your failure to God and to others. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and clean us from all unrighteousness. Don't you want to be clean from all unrighteousness this morning? We want to be pure and holy. The Bible says, be holy as I am holy. Be holy as, confess your faith as to God and to others. James 5, 16 says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other 
so that you may be healed. So there's healing. So it says the prayer of a righteous man is effectual. It is there as much. The prayer of a righteous man. We are righteous people. They are there as much. Your prayers are there as much. Praise with his holy name. Praise his holy name. Realize that if someone has something against you, you must go to that person. Be reconciled. We're told that in Matthew 5, 23 to 26. We won't put it up because we're, we're I'm going out of time almost. Um, the person that you need to forgive, as I said before, might be dead. So you still have to forgive. So you will be led to, to be reconciled to others. So if, if, you know, it's not totally dependent on you. Your freedom is in Christ. It cannot be dependent on you, but you have to take the actions. You have to take the actions. If the sun shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. You have no right or ability to control others. That man took the, that um, man that was that, that owed the money. He took the other man by the neck. He stuck to control him. You know, to control him. He had no right to do that. So don't, don't expect that your decision to forgive will, will result in major changes in the other person. They may not even be aware that you're doing it. But you must pray for them. Pray for them. So that they too, pray for them so that they too may find the freedom of forgiveness. Put up 2 Corinthians 2 verse 7, please. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 7. I'm nearly finished. So that on the contrary, you ought rather to forgive and comfort him. Least perhaps such a one be swallowed up with too much sorrow. Could be overwhelmed with sorrow. You know, another place that says, you know, like that they have suffered this a lot already. It's enough for them. So that is one of the reasons. That's another reason to forgive. Don't start to try and rationalize their behavior. Try to understand those people. But otherwise, it could lead to incomplete forgiveness because the, the rounds of the arguments could start all over again. Sometimes you can make the excuse like, you know, I forgive mommy because she didn't really mean what she said. That would be excusing her. And that would be bypassing the pain that you are feeling. And that would negate the need to forgive from the heart. Don't be making excuses for the other person. Be compassionate, but don't be making excuses for what they've done. Do you understand what I'm saying there? Does everyone understand what I'm saying there? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes, you know, we don't think of it that way. You know, to bypass the pain. Do you understand, no? Basically, like you know, like if, if somebody has done you wrong, like I mean, mm -hmm. you, you you forgive them, but you you, you like you, you you don't necessarily have to invite them into your personal space neither. Like, yes, you know, but you, yeah, you don't have to make excuses for them. Why you don't? Yeah. You don't have to make excuses. Know, yeah, like yeah, wrong. they've done what they've done. You don't have to make excuses. Mm -hmm. It may well be that they were angry with someone else when you came across them. And that their anger spilled out on you. It, it, you know, it, it displaced anger. It could be displaced anger on their behalf, you know? Because a lot of our anger is displaced anger. You know, it, it, we, we hurt the people, and it, you know, that we don't want to hurt because of displaced anger. It's something that has bothered us an hour before that, you know, you kick the cat maybe because you're angry. 
But it's not the cat you're angry with. You know, it's something that has happened beforehand that you're angry with. So it's just based on it. Another aspect is expect positive results in you. Expect positive results in you. In, in time, you'll be able to think of that person or persons without it triggering off that primary emotion that you had. You know, that rage you felt that day, that anger, that hostility that you felt that day. You know, you'll be able to think of those people without that happening. Once you're forgiven from the heart, that won't happen. You know, that primary emotion, you know, it won't be triggered any longer. That doesn't mean that you like the person that's being abusive to you still and carrying on that way. You know, it doesn't mean that. It means you're free from them. So the old feelings will always try to come back. You know, they will always try to, to um, haunt you. You know, and they recycle themselves over and over. But when that happens, you just stop and you thank God. Don't pick up those old offenses again. Don't pick them up again. Don't start recycling them again. You have dealt with them, so now let them go. Let them go. Another point. Thank God for the lessons you've learned and that you've matured and you've gained, you know, as a result of these offenses and the decision you've made to forgive your offenders. Because we are more than conquerors, as said, true in the We are more than conquerors. So we know that in all things, God works for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Yes, we are called according to his purpose. And verse 29, that's of Romans 8, 28 and 29. And verse 29 says, For those God for you, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of a son, that we might be the firstborn among many brothers. Don't you want to be conformed to the likeness of a son? Jesus didn't hurt anyone when he was here. He lived a blameless life. So we are capable of that. We are capable of living a blameless life. So God is going to grace us this morning to be reconciled. And you know, the, the one that we read often here is Matthew 5, 22 to 26. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Verse 25. Send the matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him, or you may, you know, uh, uh, him, or the way or he may hand you over to the judge, and they may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown in prison. You will not get out till you have paid the last penny. Well, let's hope none of us have gone to prison. But it means let go. Let go and let God. Let go. Let go. Take those people off the hook. Take those people. Let God deal with them. The just judge. The just judge. Let him deal with them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know, sometimes when you're criticized, you know, or rejection, you know, um, you, you, there are ways you can look at it, you know. And some people, they try to beat the system. Some give into the system, and some rebel against the system. We're none of these. We're none of these people. We love God, and we accept his forgiveness. We accept his forgiveness. So be an intercessory, Sunday. Maybe you have ticked off stuff on your phone. Maybe the Holy Spirit has recalled to mind people and things and incidents. It could be from school. We're adults now. It could be from school days. It could be from a way back there. But today, the Holy Spirit has enlightened you and brought that to focus today. That you haven't forgiven from your heart. The people may be dead that you had issues with. 
Forgive from the heart this morning. Forgive from the heart this morning. If Jesus was able to forgive everyone, even the people who nailed him down and hung him up to die for hours, and he had done no wrong, he was innocent, how much more should we be able to forgive from the heart? Not only with our mouth, sin, but forgive from the heart. And don't resurrect and don't recycle. We're going to ask God's grace because it's only by his grace that things can happen here this morning. We want to go out better people today because we're going to partake of the communion. And we want to be clean from the inside. We want to be clean from the inside. We want blessed are the pure in heart that they shall see God. We want to be pure in heart, pure in word and pure in mind. We want to be a holy people, a people set apart to God's glory, to God's glory. We want nothing to be held against us in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because on that day, when we go up in the rapture and when he unravels everything and shows us our lives, we want to be able to smile Amen. and say, yes, Lord, you did it for me. You did it. You did it. You did it. I didn't hold that against him. I didn't hold. I let go on that Sunday. And that Sunday in June, I let go of that. I didn't realize, Lord, it was so long ago. But I let go. I let go. I let that person go free. I let them off the hook. I received freedom myself on that day in June. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray for your grace this morning. And we're going to pray in tongues. As you recall in your mind, I'm sure as I was speaking, issues came up in everybody's mind. It may be that teacher that told you you'd never be any good. You'd never make it. Why do you think you could do that? My daughter was told by her teacher, you will never reach that level. How could you do that? She has proved she has done that and she's become that person. I pray that she be released from that hurt that was caused her on that day. I will never forget the cry. I will never forget that cry, that wail that she came over. That offense that hurt so deep within her. Maybe you are the victim of some of these things. That it cut to your very core. But today, God is asking you. And he said, give you and his enabling grace. To be able to let go of that hurt. Maybe you were abused, maltreated by those dearest and nearest to you. Maybe your children have been so ungrateful for all that you've done. Maybe they've gone in wayward ways. Forgive them. As Jesus forgave on the cross, he said, Forgive, for they know not what they do. Lord, let your wisdom come upon all those people. Lord. We choose to forgive. It's a matter of choosing this morning. In the name of Jesus. Lord, hear our cry this morning. Like you heard the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah. Hear our cry, Lord. We don't want to be entangled. We don't want to recycle anything again. In Jesus' name. We ask for your mercy, O Lord. For your cleansing power to come upon us in the name of Jesus. Undo everything in us that is not right. Undo us. Undo us this morning. Create in us a clean heart, O God. When you are right spirit in us, cast us not from your presence. We need your grace and we need your Holy Spirit. Wash us white as snow. Wash us white as snow. If our sins be a scar that you promised, you will wash it white as snow. Oh, you will not hold our sins against us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for your tender mercies, O oh God. 
Thank you for your forgiveness. Oh, la 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 Ora la dama cura di amma la cura, e shama la dama cura di amma la cura, shama la cura, e se di amma la cura di amma la cura di amma la cura di amma la cura, e shama la dama cura di amma la cura di amma la cura, ora la dama cura di amma la cura di amma la cura di amma la cura, e se di amma la cura di amma la cura di amma la cura, e se di amma la cura di amma la cura di amma la cura, e va la cura di amma. Father, we bring the offenders before you. Those who have offended us and caused us to hurt us. We say pray for those who persecute you and calumniate you. Oh Lord, we bring them before you, Lord. I pray your grace to come upon them. Grace of repentance to come upon them. That you will show them their iniquity. Oh Father, in the name of Jesus, you will not hold their sin against them. In the name of Jesus, I ask for your grace and your mercy to wash them clean. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, convict them of sin, convict them of eternal judgment, convict them of your right. In the name of Jesus, have mercy, have mercy, we cry for mercy, we cry for mercy. Like Sodom and Gomorrah, they say, cry for mercy for righteous people. We are crying for mercy for all of you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yanda la kana bestia. Ini yanda la kuri yanda la kuri yanda la kuri ya. Ishele yanda la kuri yanda la kuri ya. Ishele di yanda la kuri ya. Ishele yanda la kuri ya. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive your freedom in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive your freedom in Jesus' name. Do not recycle anything in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Today is a day to remember. Today is a new beginning. A new beginning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.